Hello everybody and welcome to Rosie's Tips. Today I want to talk about why and how I started eating raw. Well, it started January of this year, 2014. Um, my sister had been eating raw for a couple of years prior. Um, I would say about six, five years maybe. And she's always talked about the lifestyle to me and everything. And I would always say, oh, you're crazy. I could never eat raw. That's ridiculous. But I think I didn't really listen to her because it was in the delivery of the message. Um, I guess she didn't know how to deliver it. So I would be interested in it. And I always said, well, I got slight medical issues, you know, vitamin D, vitamin C, low on that, uh, uh, my white cells were a little low so the medical issues like that and I go I'm okay I don't need to eat raw you know why change my lifestyle you're crazy how could I not eat my cooked food I love my cooked food I love my steak I love my coffee I love all this stuff so I wasn't ready but January of this year my husband went on deployment military deployment and I said, well, let me play around with the lifestyle because I want to lose a couple, a little couple pounds. So I started eating, incorporating raw foods, but never giving up my coffee or certain uh, crackers or breads or whatever. Um, just incorporate it to my food and ate less of my regular food that I ate. I found that for the whole month of January, I didn't lose the weight. I was I was never overweight, but I wanted to lose about five pounds. I guess I was like, I'm 5'2", I was 122 pounds, and I wanted to lose about five pounds. Um, but I wasn't losing it. I didn't feel better like my sister and everybody said you would feel better. I didn't really get that feeling. But, and I was wondering why. I called my sister, she told me, well, you know, you have a lot of toxins, your stomach, your flora, your good flora, bacteria is not, is not healthy. You have a lot of bad bacteria and flora and therefore your foods that you are eating that are good are not being absorbed. The minerals are not being absorbed in your intestinal walls because of all the coffee and the toxins that are blocking it. And I was like, hmm, I don't think that's true. So I go, well, maybe it is or maybe it's not. But uh, something happened. I tried to cut back a little bit more and still struggling with it, not feeling weak. This is not working. I'm not supposed to feel like this. What's going on? So I go, hmm, something it, the blessing in disguise happened to me. Come February 14, I was at work, had abdominal cramp being really bad. Um, I was talking to my patients, asking them, you know, how was their weekend, everything, and they're, and they're telling me, and my stomach was like cramping, and I was like, oh, I don't feel good, and they noticed, and they go, you should go home, you don't look like you feel good. <laughs> And I couldn't eat breakfast that morning. I tried to try to drink some coffee, and it just, it, I just basically threw it up. Uh, and I said maybe I have a stomach virus, a stomach flu. Some of the patients were complaining that they had a stomach flu and virus the week prior. So I go, oh, I got it. So came lunchtime, I couldn't eat. After lunch, I still kept cramping. I felt like a burning acid pain that was going. Uh, my um, stomach my stomach area and I said mm, this is not normal I told my co-workers I'm going home so I went home that evening I rolled in bed with cramps all night around midnight I skyped with my husband um, and you know because he on his de he's, he was deployed at this time I Skyped with him and he said, mm, you better go to the hospital. I go, I'll go in the morning if I still don't feel good because this is not normal. Every 20 minutes, the pain just wouldn't go away. Come morning, I tried to eat breakfast. Nothing stayed. I, I mean, I didn't even get to breakfast. I drank my water that I usually drink before breakfast. It all came out. So I said, I'm going, showered, got dressed. I'm taking myself to emergency room. Got to emergency room, 
long story short, they sent me to get an MRI. They were already suspicious. They came back and they told me, your appendix ruptured. We have to take you to surgery immediately. I said, okay, did my phone calls, everything. And my initial thought after the little shock that I got, but wasn't surprised because of the pain, I said, oh, I can't wait till this is over. Hopefully I come out okay, because I'm starving. <laughs> Went to surgery, came out. Um, they put me, my platelets weren't quite right, which is normal after surgery, your, my blood work. So they put me on a clear liquid diet. They wanted to give me payment. Well, they gave me pain medication, but every time they came in and they asked me if I was in pain, I wasn't in pain. I didn't feel no pain. I The pain was gone. Pain was before the surgery. I said, no, please, no medication, no pain meds. I don't need that. I don't want it. I want food. They said, nope, strictly liquid diet, clear liquid diet. I was like, oh, coffee, no coffee. Now I want my coffee. No coffee, just clear liquid diets. For three days, I was in the hospital. They kept taking my blood, the normal. I always have the white cells low, my platelets, the normal thing that I always knew. The doctor comes and talks to me, and I said, you know, and gives me the update on my blood work. And I asked them, doc. Is there anything I could do for my white cells? Is they be, I'm just been struggling getting my white cells. Is there a diet or something? That, could I change my diet? Will it help? He's like, no, that's just something that happens to people. It's common. It's, you know, it's not your fault. It's something that just needs to be monitored and addressed, you know. Um, he goes, we'll just monitor you. And I said, it can't be possible. There has to be something that I could do. I just thought to myself. And then um, couldn't wait to get discharged. On the third day, I finally got my discharge uh, paperwork. So I was going home and I said, hmm, can't wait to go home and eat. Got home and realized that I wasn't craving my coffee and my regular foods. I felt clean. I felt like, hmm, I don't know, a good feeling. And... I started eating healthy, started incorporating mostly everything raw. And I said, I'm not gonna drink the coffee. I'm gonna see if what my sister said is true. So I started fruits, vegetables, juices, everything natural, as, as raw as I could possibly go. Um, no bread, no nothing. Go figure. Within the end of the week, I felt amazing. It was incredible. For the first time, I woke up in the morning with energy, not that tired fatigue. When I got up the first couple of steps, I didn't feel soreness. I didn't feel pain. And keep in mind, I've, I've always been an active person. Uh, I'm a physical therapy and speech therapy and occupational therapy technician. So I've always worked in um, physical therapy in the medical uh, field. I've always worked there in the hospitals as well and I've always been physically active. Um, not completely fit but active. But I've always had these aches and pains that my patients would always talk about. I started getting them too because I will be 50 this year and the, we always have a joke at work that you know when the patients came in and they're like oh um, every day how are you doing oh I'm in such pain I'm in such pain and I would joke and I would say well you know if you wake up one day over 50 and you're not in pain then that means you must be dead I didn't tell my patients this but this is a joke we had around you know us at work and um it was true, you know, after a certain age, you wake up with aches and pains and everything. I didn't have that when I woke up. I woke up and I felt energetic. I felt not the puffiness in my face that I usually had. I felt no aches and pains. And I was like, how could this be possible? And what I noticed, my weight started dropping too. I go, oh my gosh, this raw food thing does work. But what I wasn't doing right is I wasn't 
cutting out the toxic foods. Um, I wanted to transition slowly, but I forgot to cut the toxic foods out. I was still having the toxic foods and the gluten. I didn't eat the bread, but I would buy the crackers and the wheat crackers and this and that to substitute it, but I was supposed to give up that completely. And the coffee, I didn't realize that the coffee was not helping my stomach flora. So I had more bad bacteria than my good bacteria was actually just being diminished by the bad bacteria. So what happened at the hospital, I was forced to go into a detox mode. My body was forced to go into a detox mode because of the surgery. And that's basically what saved me. That's what helped me. That's what made me realize that my sister was 100% right. <laughs> so after that, I started going raw. Long story short, my husband came back from his deployment after a couple of months. And I, he's like, he did tell me when we would Skype, don't expect me to eat like that because I need my meat. I mean, he was eating meat over there. He was, his chicken, his steak, uh, his cooked foods, his everything. And he goes, when I come home, I need to, I go, don't worry. I mean, this is how I eat and it makes me feel good. But when you get home, you could eat whatever you want. So he gets home finally and um, I'm prepping my food and everything and I go, I give him some and he's eating what I'm eating the first couple of days because we're getting him settled, paperwork, unpacking, you know, all that. And I didn't go grocery shopping. So he's eating everything. I'm making my green um, juice in the morning and I give him some. He's back to the gym routine. He comes back. I make him a banana shake because I'm having my banana shakes. And then I'm making a huge salad and he starts eating the salad. He goes, hey, this is good. This is good. This is good. And I go, oh, really? You like it? He goes, yeah, I do. I go, okay, cool. And then we go, finally, I think three days later, it came time to go grocery shopping. I go, let's go grocery shopping and get everything we need for you, you know, because I'm going to keep eating like this. I feel great. And he goes, you know what? I feel great too. He goes, I'm starting to feel good. I go, really? He goes, yeah. He goes, let's not buy regular food. <laughs> that I mean, food to cook. He goes, let's keep buying what you buy. Let's keep doing this for a while. I go, okay. Even I thought when he gets back, I'll eventually have to stop because, you know, it's not going to work. Well, this was in May that he got back and we are in... July, the end of July, so tomorrow starts August. August 15th will be my sixth month on raw food. Um, I would say 90% raw by now. When I say 90% is because my husband and I eat raw at home, uh, mostly raw, completely raw at home. When we go out socially with friends, we have uh, we don't want anybody to feel uncomfortable. We don't want people to feel that we're odd or something when we're in social settings. So just, um, it's not a bad thing for us because it works. We do eat like steamed vegetables or we don't eat red meat. Uh, he eats chicken on occasion. I don't. I do eat fish on occasion, but only if I go out in a social setting and we're having dinner with people. I will get my steamed vegetables or grilled and also steamed fish with lemon um, just to, you know, to to be social and be able to be with friends. But if I can, I'll, eat, I'll just order a huge salad and just, you know, modify um, the menu a little bit with the waitress and they most of the time they're able to accommodate us. I still have wine probably once or twice a month if I go out socially with friends only, you know, because it doesn't bother me. But other than that, we mostly do eat raw. And my husband has liked it so much that he does not want to go back to cook foods. And that really surprised me. He's a military guy, uh, meat and potatoes kind of guy, tall, very fit, very uh, physically fit, always at the gym every day. 
Um, that really did surprise me. Other than his friends at work teasing him, you know, putting cupcakes and candy and stuff in his lunch box as a joke. That, that's how he, get, he, he gets teased, but he doesn't mind it. He enjoys it, and we're still eating raw. And that's, that's how and why I started eating raw, thanks to my sister and thanks to things that happened you know, in my life for a reason. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope I did give you some kind of information on why and how I started eating raw. And by the way, before I leave you, white blood cells, for me, I cannot say for anybody else, had my blood test, they're good. So when the doctor told me that there's nothing, that diet wouldn't help my white blood cells, I can't believe that it did help my white blood cells go back up. So my white blood cells are normal, thank God. The only issue that I do have is my vitamin D and my B12. I do take su supplement for B12 and vitamin D because when I go on chronometer and I put what I eat daily, it basically tells me how much B12 I'm getting and how much D. And I see those are the lowest with this diet so I do take supplements for that but other than that I'm doing great and I want to leave you guys with try to incorporate more fruits and vegetables in your diet it definitely is beneficial it worked for me and thank you for watching if you like my videos please give me a like and subscribe and I'll try to keep bringing more information on this lifestyle you guys have a wonderful day.